Let's now introduce the concept of Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. The idea here is that you can take a complicated circuit or a complex circuit and reduce it to a model that consists of only a voltage source, an independent voltage source, and a series resistance. So for example, here we have the schematic of an LM324 operational amplifier. As you can see, it's relatively complicated. It's got a number of transistors and some capacitors, some diodes, and some resistors would be buried inside there also. But generally speaking, when we're using op amps, we're not really concerned about what's inside the amplifier. We simply want to know what's going on between the A and B terminals, the output voltage, and what happens to that output voltage as we then connect some sort of a load to it, as we use that amplifier to, to perform some, some desirable function. So the idea here is that we can reduce this complex circuit down to a single voltage source with a single resistance in series with it, and that a load connected between the terminals A and B here will experience the same voltage and current relationships that that same load connected to between the A and B terminals of the amplifier would experience. It's something like a powertrain in an automobile. The automobile has an engine, and, and the power of the engine, it may be a 300 horsepower engine at the shaft. But you don't experience 300 horsepower at the wheels because it when it goes through the transmission and goes through the drive shaft, you come to the differential and then out the rear axle to the wheel bearings before you get to the actual wheels, you have losses, due, typically due to friction and vibration, all along the drivetrain, such that the power at the wheels is different than the power at the engine itself. with a Thevenin equivalent circuit, we're saying we really don't care about what's happening with the transmission. We really don't even care about how big the engine is inside. All we care about is what are, how much power can we get at the wheels? Or in electrical terms, what is the voltage? And as we start requiring the circuit to drive a load, how is that load going to affect the voltage at the terminals. Well, why would it, or how do we know that it does? Let's just take an example of one that we're all very familiar with. Any source, as you start to draw current from it, as you connect a load, any source will see a reduction in the terminal voltage. It may be minimal and negligible. But an example of one that's not minimal and negligible, negligible one that we can relate to is a car battery. Now in a car battery, if you have nothing connected, you put your voltmeter across the terminals, so we call that the open circuit voltage. We measure the open circuit voltage. You'll measure something around 14.4 volts. You turn on the lights, and you'll get a certain amount of light out. The, the lights will burn at a certain brightness. And if you were to measure the voltage, you might detect a relatively small voltage drop there. But with the lights on, if you then connect the starter motor, engage the starter motor by putting on the key, what happens to the lights? The lights dim, don't they? They dim because as the battery is required to produce enough current to drive not only the lights but also the starter motor, which, which draws a large amount of current, we see a voltage drop at the terminals. That voltage drop is modeled by this series resistance that shows a voltage drop across it as current starts to flow from the battery. So just in general, or to, to summarize then, we're going to have some actual circuit, more complicated, less complicated, we don't really care. We don't care what's going on inside there. We simply want to know what are its terminal characteristics. What happens if I connect some load between A and B? We're saying that we can model this complex circuit with a simple circuit consisting of a Thevenin voltage, a DC volt, uh, a, a, a voltage supply, and a series resistance. To create this model, then, we need to determine the values of the two components, V Thevenin and R Thevenin. V Thevenin is nothing more than the voltage you measure across the terminals with no load connected to it.
We refer to that as the open circuit voltage, and thus V Thevenin is simply the open circuit voltage. Now, to measure R Thevenin, and we're going to learn a number of different ways of doing this, but conceptually, R Thevenin can be determined by shorting the terminals A and B and measuring the current that then flows. We'll refer to that current as the short circuit current, current I short circuit. And we'll notice that I short circuit is going to equal the voltage drop, V Thevenin, or the voltage that's dropped across the resistance, or I short circuit is going to equal V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin. Thus, R Thevenin is equal to V Thevenin divided by I short circuit, or the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. And in fact, we're going to use that and claim that that is the definition of R Thevenin. So our task then, as we now start looking at different circuits and de determining their Thevenin equivalent circuits, our task is going to be to determine what the Thevenin voltage is, or the open circuit voltage, and what the Thevenin resistance is.